All right, are we going to get taxes uh, done this year or not? Mixed messages, one from the leader, one from the guy who's running the House Ways and Means Committee. It started with the leader intimating maybe not this year. Take a look. Obviously, this Congress is in session through next year. So was he giving up on this year? No, not necessarily. Look, I know in our discussions, the leader, um, McConnell, the president, the House, we are all on the same page on tax reform. We are. are you? We know are you? this because is an ambitious I get timetable. I get different vibes. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely believe that. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Not one of us can do it by ourselves. It's going to take a team effort with the president. We know this is ambitious schedule. President Reagan's reform, uh, the, the big one, took two and a half years. We are being ambitious. I think it's achievable, and we're just going to stay on that timetable. All right, the guy who runs the House Ways and Means Committee who says despite the different vibes you're getting, uh, they will get to tax reform this year. It won't be a next year development. Virginia Republican Congressman Scott Taylor on that. What do you think, Congressman? Well, thanks for having me on, Neil. It's always great to be with you. Here. Uh, I'm an optimist. You know, by, I'm an optimist. So I think that we're going to get to it. I think we'll get to it this year. Um, that being said, whether it gets completely done this year or in the beginning of next year, We'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, as you very well know, politics can throw monkey wrenches into the plans. Uh, yes, there, there, are, there is a overall, uh, there is definitely a movement towards getting tax reform done on all three, you know, with the president, with the leader, obviously Chairman Brady, and as well as the House. Uh, but we've got to come together. We've got to push something through. We might not get everything we want, but it's important that we push something through. All right. Do you think the... For the uh, American people, obviously. Obviously. Uh, do you think that this, this rift or bad blood, or however you want to describe it, with the president calling out uh, Mitch McConnell in the Senate and, and Paul Ryan about the failures to get certain things done that he wanted to get done, is hurting those chances? Or is this just sort of like the coach, you know, Badger and his team to get, get on with it? Well, I think we're all professionals here, you know, so I think at the end we all want the same thing in terms of getting tax reform to help the American people, to make businesses more competitive, get some of that money back from, from overseas here flowing through the economy. Uh, so I think short-term-wise, there, there's a little bit of frustration to get things done, and I understand that from the president's sta uh, standpoint. But do your course, colleagues feel you know, we, that, that it's one thing to privately express your frustration, but to very publicly do so, it's almost like... He, the president, could be pre-throwing you guys under the bus uh, if this doesn't happen. I think the tone could be a little bit uh, toned down a little bit, if you will, for sure. I mean, I, you know, relationships matter. It's important to be able to to talk to one another to get things done to hash it out. In the end, we are professionals. We all we do want the same thing. I think I think the president, uh, again, I understand his frustration for sure. I'm frustrated. Uh, we have 260 bills sitting over in the Senate right now that we've passed in the House. So that being said, I think long-term wise, it would probably be more advisable for the president to focus on those, uh, those Democrat seat, Senate seats that uh, could be turned over, of course, to our side in 2018. That, that would probably be more helpful. I understand he wants to go to 51 votes. If there's something like tax reform that, again, is sorely needed across, across the spectrum in the United States, certainly for the working folks, uh, then, yes, we should go to 51 in the Senate to be able to get something done. But long term, I think that we should focus on more, a more functioning majority in the Senate, and that would be to turn some of those vulnerable Democrat seats. You know, uh, no one's in the Wall Street Journal, uh, usually, you know, a friendly uh, paper when it comes to the President of the United States, or more supportive, let's say, than many others, uh, to express frustration with the President's demeanor and tone uh, with Congress. Uh, but offering some ideas, I want to quote something from that editorial today, sure. Congressman, that Republicans can't count on Mr. Trump to provide them any political air cover for tax reform. Taxes were supposed to be the GOP theme during the August recess, but none of the speeches or TV appearances are breaking through because the president can't give up the spotlight. So what they essentially said is um, Congress should act on its own, come up with something, don't necessarily check it with the White House and leave it up to the president to accept or veto. What do you think of that? I think it's, there's a legitimate point there, a legitimate argument, whether it's, uh, whether it's the president or whether it's the media and their intense focus on the president and what he says, what he does, you know, what, whatever looks he's given somebody that day. Um, I, I think that, that definitely stifles the dialogue, the tax dialogue from our perspective. I think there's a legitimate point in there that we should work as a House, as a Senate together, get something done in terms of tax reform, come to a conclusion, make sure that everybody feels as though they're part of the team, that they, their ideas, the best ideas come to the top, of course. Right. Right. Communicate that well, and then, of course, use leadership to, to push that through, give it to the president. If we do that, I think that he would sign it. 
Um, Congressman, is it your sense that the mortgage deduction should be changed, adjusted, lowered, uh, the sales tax, and I'm, I'm sorry, the state taxes a lot of people pay, but that, that should also be, be reexamined as part of this tax cut wave, or would you leave those both alone? I would leave the mortgage deduction alone. I mean, that's one of the biggest deductions, obviously, for the for the working class and in America, the middle class in America. Obviously, I, I come from a like lower middle class. I would say that's a big deal uh, for for families. So I, I wouldn't mess with that. Would now, you lower it? Though, tax, I mean, I, for most people, I mean, if let's say one of the ideas was, was, was taking it from a million dollar mortgage uh, max to six hundred thousand, most Americans would not be affected by that. Upper income folks likely would, or those who live in pricey areas. Would you be open to that? I would I would be open to that if it if it gets a, a broader deal a better deal a flatter a fairer um, a more simpler tax code for everyone if that's on the table you know I'm not I'm not going to say definitively that I wouldn't be for that but in terms of the middle class and their and their mortgage deduction I would not touch that. Okay, Congressman, thank you for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.